Okay, now we're going to start with everyone's favorite, the website. Okay, but a little bit of planning goes a long way. So we're going to spend one whole video just planning on how we're going to lay out our website and what colors we're going to use and what font, etc. I just wanted to show you two design examples. And um, this was from a few years ago. Uh, the topic was identity theft. I just recreated these websites using just grade 11 um, tags. The only tag that I used that's not grade 11 was the tag called block quote to actually get this space on the side of the pages. So you'll see here I used colors that are similar to the pictures that I've got. Um, I said where I got the picture from uh, in my source list over there. And I uh, emphasized the headings just by using a different color for the headings. And in general, it's always good to have a light background color and have dark text. Okay. So the first thing you need to decide on is what you actually want to put on your website. Um, what you need to do is you need to have two web pages that forms a web site. Okay. So two pages that you created yourself that then forms a website. So they need to be linked to each other so that you can click from the one to the other, from the other to the back to the first one. Okay. So that's completely up to you. Um, I can make two suggestions for you and you can really think of something else as well. Um, one of them could be you could have a home page, like a landing page that's just got a big title, maybe your introduction and like a or maybe your abstract and a picture. And then the second page like has your intro, the content and um, findings or like the conclusion and the bibliography, something like that. OK, or you can have where the first page is uh, the intro and the content and the second page is the findings, conclusion and the bibliography. OK. All right, so what your website structure is, is step number one. Step number two is you need some kind of picture, okay? You have to have at least one picture. Now, you can use a graph as a picture, but that's really quite boring. Um, so personally, uh, I think it's better anyway because there is a mark for um, referencing outside sources properly. Uh, it's better anyway if you do have internet access to use a picture from the outside. So. If you want to use your graph, you can right click on this and save it as a picture. Let's see. Uh, no, it's not working now. So let's cut it again. Sometimes if you paste it again and you paste it as a picture, then it will give you the option to save as a picture. I don't know why it's changed the color now, but then I can save it as a picture and actually use it in my um, final website. All right, so let's say I want a picture on online shopping. So I am search the words online shopping. I go to images. Now, you're not just allowed to use any images. Okay, You have to actually go to tools, check the usage rights, and check labeled for non-commercial reuse. Because we're not making money out of this, so it's non-commercial reuse. And then you actually have stuff that you are allowed to use. We're just going to acknowledge where we got it from, but that way we're using images legally. Okay. So let's say I want to use this picture. I'll click on it to open that it loads fully. I have to wait for the gray bar at the bottom to finish loading. Okay. So now we save the picture, save image as, and we'll go to your pet data. And inside websites, it's very important because it can't be, remember your website, HTML file, needs to be in the same place as your picture, okay? Give it an easy name. Okay, and save. Now, please don't close the page yet. We actually need to get the URL for this. So, uh, please don't just copy the link here. It's... um. The image address we can see, but usually that is such a long link, it's like unusable. So, I think what you need now is you need like a blank Word document. So, let's go File, New, 
and let's see how long that image address is okay that's not too bad that's fine okay so just check if you copy the link address i think that's going to be very long do you see so it shouldn't be that it should be the image address copy image address so that one you can use so it shouldn't be too long a url if it's very long just open the image and then you go and copy that at the top as well we could use that as well okay you need to save this or keep it handy because we're going to need this url later so now we've got a picture now personally what i quite like doing is i like using elements from that picture as my color scheme okay so i'll for example use like a soft gray for my background and use a dark blue for my headings and maybe like an orange for the accents for like the lines okay so to choose colors you can use an html color picker and then you'll have your um, image open next to you and so i'll have that and i'll go to blue and then i'll just move this till i have something that's close to that i can see okay that looks actually not too bad. And now that I've got that color that I want, this is the hex code that I'm going to copy then. So then I'll go and I'll put that in that Word document that I've got open here. And I'll say blue. I'll copy that hex code. And that way I'm doing the planning of what colors I'm going to use. Now I've got another document for you if you'd like. Um, there is you just have to then use a picture that's going to fit with this color scheme gorgeous color schemes from award-winning websites so i'll put this in the folder for everyone who wants to use the offline videos um, and for those who are using the online videos i'll put the link in the description it's a really nice website that has um, examples of great uh, award-winning websites and the colors they use so here are the actual hex color codes for the colors they used in each website so if you look at this, it's just really, really great content. Um, that's the color code. That's the hex code for this specific color and for that one and for that one and for that one. So it's very nice to actually pick one that you like. So let's say I like this one and then stick with these colors on your web page and don't use any other colors because they know that these ones work together. Or just use two or three of them. You don't have to use all five. Okay, try not to use too many colors either. Okay, now for fonts, we have to choose one from these. Okay, these are web safe fonts. Now, I know that if you go to Word and you look over here, there are many, many more fonts to choose from. Okay, the problem is you don't know if the person looking at your website has this same font installed on their computer. So, therefore, you can't just use any font that you see unfortunately something like this carnivale freak show i downloaded this specifically for a poster the likelihood of anyone else having this on their computer is virtually zero so i can't just use any font that tickles my fancy i have to use fonts that i know people on other devices and on other types of computers will also have so therefore these are web safe fonts that you can safely use that you'll know that other people will be able to open and will look the same on their side. So pick a web safe font. If you want to combine more than one, these ones are called um, sans serif fonts. These are usually nice for the big blocks of text, and these are called serif fonts. Now the serif fonts have these little tails on the end, okay, these little extra stripes on the end of all the letters. Um, they are usually nice for headings. Okay. Um, yeah. So these are the headings or these are the fonts that you can use. So you can either use one font for the whole page or you can use a font that's separate for the headings and a different font for the body text. So make your decision and write that on your planning. And then we're done and we're ready to get started.